Good morning. It's James Steinhubel with TVU, and I'm with Doris Bonora is the, uh, with Denton's Law. She is the Canadian group leader of Denton's Trust, Estates, and Wealth Preser Preservation Practice. Her practice focuses on will planning, estate planning, estate administra administration, estate litigation, and trusts. And her practice involves developing estate plans for her clients that match their family and their needs. Good morning, Doris. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me on. It is a, is a delight and a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so kindly. And how are you, how are you doing with, uh, with the current situation? How are you and your, your, your team at work and your family doing? Uh, you know, our family is good and our team is really good. Um, you know, in a pandemic, people are worried about getting their wills done and getting their personal directives. Of course, our practice um, is really about uh, illness and death. And so uh, it, we've been actually quite busy. And so we've been reaching out to lots of people and they've been reaching out to us to get their estate plans in place. Uh, so, so far, so good for us. It's a new reality with all of my staff working remotely. And um, so that's been a bit of a challenge from a management perspective, but actually so far, so good. And how about, um, if people don't know, Denton's is, has roots in the community back into the 1830s. It's a you know, major significant global legal brand across Canada. How's, how are you guys doing across Canada? You imagine you've been doing virtual meetings, so it's not much different, but... Yeah, virtual meetings is a new reality. Um, and, uh, you know, across Canada, our team is busy. Our whole, uh, uh, Denton's is a global firm. We're the biggest firm in the world. So we have, uh, I probably won't get the statistics right, but something like 183 offices in 75 countries. So um, we truly are talking about the pandemic globally. Everyone in our uh, global offices is of course affected by this. Um, so across Canada and across the world, uh, we're talking about the pandemic and um, servicing clients in so many different aspects. So we, you know, have landlords who are worried about collecting rent and clients who have businesses who are worried about paying that rent. And there's so many aspects to this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have a lot of questions or not a lot of questions, but a lot of, you know, kind of deeper insight that I want to talk to you about. But to start with, you're a uh, Edmonton person. You uh, went to uh, the U of A. Mm -hmm. How, you know, start with your undergrad and how does someone become a partner in the largest uh, law firm on the planet? Tell us. Oh, uh, I feel very blessed and very lucky. Um, I actually started in Little Brooks, Alberta, uh, and then came to the U of A to do uh, my undergrad and then go to law school. And um, then I started at a more regional firm just in Edmonton and about eight years ago moved to uh, what was then Fraser Miller Casgrain and that became Denton's. And um, I, you know, just have been very lucky in terms of having um, a very great practice, people who are drawn to me to get their work done. And I've built up a team at Denton's that just in Edmonton has uh, seven lawyers and six paralegals. So we're one of the biggest estate planning teams, uh, certainly in the city. Um, and yeah, the Denton's platform in terms of being global and being able to, um, I went to China to speak on wills and estates, which was very fascinating. And uh, I've been able to travel across the world to do various estate planning things. So uh, yeah, I feel very, very lucky to be a partner in the largest firm in the world. And just as a side, you guys, um, you know, basically took a, a really nice spot in the ice district. Tell, tell us about where your new office is. Yeah, it's very exciting. I feel like the uh, center of downtown has moved to the ice district. So we moved to the Stantec Tower uh, in June of this year. So we occupy three floors. We have a very beautiful view of Rogers Place and of the whole plaza. Um, we also have some good views into, uh, you know, the JW Marriott hotel room. So uh, we've had some interesting views from there. Uh, but no, we have some very beautiful uh, offices and we feel very lucky to be part of that whole new uh, excitement once we're back to having festivals and uh, being able to get together with people. Yeah, and it's going to be it, when that all returns. It's going to be very lovely, and uh, and it's it's nice to know that uh, you guys are uh, you know taking taking the, your due position, but also also leadership. You know, it's a um, it's a significant uh, responsibility and duty to um, 
to take on the uh, the work that you do and also to be uh, asked to uh, to do that so you know by your not just your your peers in your work but in the in the legal community so again it, it's it's nice it's nice to have you so as we um, as we uh, you know go through this uh, this covid experience and you know the um, you know, people are people are passing away unexpectedly. Uh, people are 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 approaching that to uh, to pass away, and people might just be um, you know more concerned about it. So, as you know, as you have began to handle handle your clients, uh, what what if, without being specific and, and getting into providing advice, but you know more you know general view, you know what kind of things have you had to attend to more? You know, in the in the whole process of uh, wills and estates? Um, so the, the big issue in the pandemic was uh, people wanting to get their affairs in order quickly. Uh, so they were scared that they might get sick, they were scared that they might die, and uh, they just wanted to make sure that if anything happened, they had something in place. So what we one thing we've been doing is while we normally would want to sit down with people and explore their families and explore their assets and really develop a, a great estate plan for them we've kind of been into perhaps the takeout will where we say okay well let's just get something very quick in place so you for sure have an executor and a attorney for your power of attorney and an agent for your personal directive and you have something in place and when we're through the pandemic and we're finished panicking then we can sit down and do the proper estate plan so you know we of course do everybody's wills but i'll give you an example we had a fellow who has assets in um the united states and in canada and in the caribbean and um he recently had some significant health issues. And so we did four wills for him for the various jurisdictions he was in. Pretty simple. Normally that would be a pretty complex uh, matter, uh, but just quickly to get him and uh, have those documents in place. So the first thing was, you know, we, and we kind of encouraged this. We said, try and just get something in place, even if it's not perfect, because then at least you're prepared. Second, the second thing we've been challenged with is social distancing is um, the witnessing of those documents. So we can't get together with people to witness their documents and a will requires, a formal will requires two witnesses. And so we've been thinking about how can we do that? And um, even with, if, even if you have a big table, how about somebody who's in quarantine and shouldn't be near anyone? Mm -hmm. So we, um, you know, like snowbirds who are coming back. So we got creative. We said, well, you know, with snowbirds, maybe what we will do uh, is have people just witness those wills through the living room window and uh, then pass the documents out. And for people who could in fact get together for social distancing, we said, why don't you get together in a garage? Because the car can act as your table. The car has, you know, the social distancing. Uh, you're not out in minus 20, which we've had in this crazy spring we've been having. Um, and so we've had to be very creative in terms of getting that, uh, just the document signed in a way that we thought would be valid. Um, so those have been the probably the two biggest challenges we've uh, encountered in the pandemic. That's, uh, that's very, that's very in interesting. So actually quite interesting that you guys would be that uh, um, creative. That's, that's, that's great. That's good. So as we, you know, I wanted, I wanted to, um, because you're a partner in a law firm, you're, you know, you're Canadian uh, lead from a, you know, the, major law firm I wanted to um, um, you know test the, the depth of your mind and the sharpness of your intelligence so I went to uh, the Supreme Court site and wanted to see you know what was the leading edge and what what, what was going on with uh, will and estate law and there's not a lot going on like the last sort of major thing that was that was a 2002 I think it was uh, Gurner root versus Gurner root and three uh, leaves for uh, appeal that were denied and what it, and then I went and I looked at the um, the makeup of the Supreme Court and there's two that that come that right away that have will and a state law as their practice that are now on the Supreme Court so what I saw was that 
will in a state law is well established and fundamental to you know our our law and our, our system of things is is that a is that a fair view uh, oh my gosh well of course you know interesting so there's lots of areas of law i would say my area of law which is wills and estates absolutely affects everyone so you know not everyone's going to have a patent not everyone's going to have a company but everyone is going to die and so it is an area of law that is uh completely well established of course People have been doing wills for as long as people have been dying. People have been doing trusts for, and in uh, powers of attorney from when you know men went on crusades and left their brothers to take care of their affairs. So it has a long, long history. Um, not you're right. Not many cases get to the Supreme Court of Canada because, of course, to get to the Supreme Court of Canada, you have to have something that's of national importance. So it has to be something. Can't just be I'm fighting with my brother. It has to be something that would apply across the provinces. Um, law in wills and estates is provincial based. So every province has their own wills and estates law. And so that's why it's, sometimes it's a bit harder to get to the Supreme Court of Canada. Um, there have been cases involving spousal support that have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada. Two very interesting cases that went to the Supreme Court maybe five years ago around daughters and fathers owning joint uh, accounts together and whether those should go to the daughter when the father dies or go to the estate. Um, so you're right. But I would say that, you know, at the lower court level, so Court of Queen's Bench and the Alberta Court of Appeal, um, they see estate cases fairly often. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I would say, because that means your family ended up in court. And it probably means that you didn't do very good planning uh, because otherwise they probably wouldn't have ended up in court. So, you know, are we kind of in our practice, we have this little theme that says, you know, if you do a good will, you do some good planning, hopefully your family will get together for Christmas the year after you die. And um, gosh, the, those families that end up in court, I can assure you, they're not getting together for Christmas. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. So that, that, lead, that leads me to uh, the next series of, of questions is the um the opening window with all the uh, the changes and and not changes but uh our footing is changed because of the uh because of covid and the um um unclear wills and uh you know interstate estates um what and, and then the process of um the probate system and surrogate matters and moving and moving moving wills through to, uh, to get, you know, to have, have them, uh, have them manifest. How's the court, um, functioning right now? Like, is it, is it all, all systems go, you know, can people be confident in the system? Uh, confident in the system, not all systems go. So the courts shut down pretty quickly, uh, in the, uh, once, you know, the shutdowns happen, of course, the courtrooms and the courthouse is a pretty confined space, so they had to do that. Um, they've been working at trying to develop technology to do things electronically. They're very open to dealing with anything of an emergent nature. And certainly, um, even lately, they've said, okay, even if it's not a true crazy emergency, if you th really think something needs to get dealt with, um, call us and we will hear you. So they're doing everything by telephone application. Um, in the probate process, which is a desk application, you don't actually appear, uh, the courts have continued to work and obviously were delayed, but um, we've been getting probates back from the courts. So th that seems to be, while slow, all systems go. Excellent. Excellent. You know, before, you know, I just want, as we go, before we, you know, we leave, I've been asking um, everybody from, you know, every kind of sector that, that I spent time with, if you have um, anything that you, you would like to share with our, our viewers and, and listeners. You know, I, I guess my big message would be, I think lots of people think, well, do I really need a will. I feel like I have a lot of debt and probably nobody wants that. So why do I really need a will? And I would say the biggest reason for having one is um, A, to keep your family out of court, so have some uh, plans, but probably the bigger reason is to have an executor name. So when anybody dies, it's always sad and there's always turmoil and people act odd 
weird, they say weird things when they're grieving. And when you don't have an executor, it's kind of like not having a referee in a game or not having a boss of a company. You don't have anybody who can just say, hey, no, we're not going to divide the China cabinet now. We're going to go to the funeral instead. You don't have anybody who can kind of take control and who is the, the uh, appointed boss by the person who died. So when the person who died appoints an executor, people respect that decision. And now that person is in charge. And I just think without a will, now you have this turmoil where nobody can take control and make sure that um, bad things don't happen in those early days when everyone is grieving. So that, even if you think that's all you have is debt, um, it's probably not true because if you think about it, most people are worth a lot more dead than alive because uh, you are never going to spend your own life insurance. You maybe have insurance on your mortgage. You have your RSPs. If you count all that up, you're probably worth something. And then it's worth having a plan for your family. And I think all of us try so hard to keep our families together and happy. And really one of the best things you can do for them is to put a good plan in place for even after uh, you're gone. And so that's on the will side. It is true that in this pandemic, people are getting sick, really sick. And um, you need someone to manage your affairs. And uh, from a healthcare perspective, who's making those healthcare decisions for you? And gosh, it would be so great if you just pick someone who you know would make decisions like you would make them so that we know also who's in charge then. So we don't have fights among the family in terms of who should be making uh, those decisions. And then the last thing I would say is, and obviously we know that lots of businesses are struggling, lots of people are struggling with their finances. If you get sick, you still need someone to help you with your finances. So who can apply for all those great government programs that are coming in? Who can make sure your business has, you know, a hope of surviving? Um, without a power of attorney, no one can step in and do any of those things for you. So I just think that in this pandemic, in our, you know, uh, craziness that's happening, it's so important to get these done. And while you think maybe law firms are closed or you can't get together. It's so possible to get these done by uh, doing um, telephone conferences to get instructions and then uh, lots of creative ways to get the documents signed. That's good, that's good. How, how, do, how do people uh, get a hold of you and your team, Doris? Uh, so they can reach out to us um, on our website at uh, dentons.com. Uh, they can reach out to me at my email address, doris.benora at dentons.com. And uh, we are uh, very quick to get back to people and uh, help them out. That's awesome. Uh, James Steinhubel, TVU. And we've had uh, Doris Benora with us, a partner at, uh, at Dentons. Thank you so kindly, Doris. It was so, it was Thank so you so much for having me. I really appreciate you having me on and helping us to deliver our message. Thank you so much. Thank you so kindly. Bye now. Bye.